Oh, yeah. uh, right. So, Brandy, what's the status of Awesome Kong? Is she a full-time AEW roster member now? She's a good friend of mine. Um, she's with me when I need her to be. Maybe that means more for future. Maybe that's maybe that's here and there for now. But um, whenever she wants to be around, she'll be around. How do you think uh, the match went today as far as, you know, all this training that you did working up to this big moment? So how did you think the finished product turned out today? I mean, I won. <laughs> what else are you looking for? I won. I pinned her in the middle of the ring. The count of three happened. That means I'm good now. So uh, a lot of people, I think a lot of people like to think, oh, you know, Brandy, because I saw one match of hers 100,000 years ago, she sucked. Well, I won. So there's that. Well, Brandy, since this was your AEW debut, how do you feel that uh, the audience would receive this versus what they might have seen from you in the past? Um, I mean, I hate to be a broken record here, but I won. <laughs> so you can see it however you want to see it. You can say, oh, you know, this, she had awesome Kong, and she's somebody's wife, and I mean, everybody's somebody's wife, right? Whatever. I won. In the middle of the ring, there was a three count. That means I'm good. So, Brand, um, what's next with you for AEW? Ooh. I mean, the possibilities are so grand. I mean, we have All Out coming up, and uh, you know we haven't made any announcements on any women's matches or anything happening there yet, but I won tonight, so I'm really hoping I will have something to do at All Out. So you said uh, in, before the match in the video package that you were talking about how it was big for you internally to get it done and to show that you had more in the tank for you, so to speak. How does that feel like bringing an awesome Kong? It seems a little contradictory in that regard. Does it though? Because I also said in that video, I would do whatever it took to win that match. So I think it's all fair game. And there's no rules that say you can't have a friend at ringside. The rules say the friend can't interfere. So I like, I see, I've seen a lot of people saying, well, you know, because she's an executive, she brought a friend. Alec could have brought a friend. No one stopped Aja from coming in, so maybe she just wasn't smart enough to bring a friend. I brought a friend. It's fine. You have insurance for your medical, right? In case I get sick, I have an insurance card. I can go see a doctor. Why on earth wouldn't I have that at ringside? Brandy, big win for you tonight. But Thank you. You're the first guy to say, hey, <laughs> Brandy, big thank you. What was it like, though, that dynamic of at the end having Aja and Awesome both in there in the ring and what that means for AEW? Well, I mean, uh, any way you slice it, those are two of the biggest, most revered female competitors in, in history. So it's a sight to see the two of them in the ring at the same time and to get face to face like that. Um, time will tell what will, what will happen with that. Um, you know, Awesome Kong, she's obviously chomping at the bit to do more. Uh, she, we've seen just little bits of her here and there. Um, I don't know if I can keep her from Aja Kong. I don't know. There's clearly a situation there. I know that they used to tag together and, you know, they have a big history in Japan, but I don't know if somebody, you know, took someone's man or whatever happened, but that was intense. And uh, I can't keep her from her. So I think Aja should be careful. That's my personal opinion. I was not happy to see her, but I was very happy that Awesome Kong was there to divert that situation. You Brandy, being the chief brand officer of All Elite Wrestling, how is the balance mixing it with your in-ring work as well? Um, I mean, it's tiring. Uh, I train pretty much every day. Um, I also train, well, first of all, I've, I've had a lot of people tell me that I looked really good out there. None of you did, but I'm just gonna tell you, uh, I, in my training, I'm really toned up. I lost about 10 pounds, so <laughs> I really take it really seriously. Um, I'm in there all the time, but then, you know, the, the daily work of the CBO never stops. So my phone rings at 2 o'clock in the morning. I, generally, I answer it. Um, we have a lot going on. We're a brand new company. We're building all the time. So it's a lot of work. Sometimes we don't sleep that much, but that's what you do for things that you love. That's what I used to do for figure skating. Not anymore. Brandy, is Awesome Kong your insurance policy for the women's championship? That's a good question. I mean, we're not there yet. So... We'll see, we'll see what happens. I mean, at this stage in the game, I think I really just really needed a solid win. And like I said, insurance, what's the harm in it? 
Uh, I feel like I got that win without her. I feel like had she not been there, I'd have been fine. But we had her, just in case. So in the sense that I do make it down that road and maybe I'm in the first title contention, I don't think it would be a bad thing if I brought her, but uh, only time will tell. Randy, how hot was that ring tonight for um, it's very warm. Uh, we're in Jacksonville in July. Um, thankfully, I've lived in Florida for a long time. I lived in Miami for a while, Tampa, Orlando, so I know all this crazy heat and humidity. Um, I think it was harder on my hair, as you can see, than anything else. But uh, it was okay. It was okay. You get what I, where I train in Atlanta, it's about 95 degrees in there, and there are no fans and no air conditioning. So I'm kind of used to being a bucket of sweat every time I, yeah. You get to tag in with uh, Austin Kong? Of course not. I, I would love that. I would love the opportunity to tag with Austin Kong. Uh, I would love to learn from her. There's always more and more that you can learn, no matter how much you're training. I thought about about 10 things that I would like to go back on Monday and work on now because I've watched the show and I've seen all these other cool things that other people are doing, and I, I want to do that. So. Um, I'm sure working directly with someone like that that has 17 years experience uh, in ring wouldn't hurt. You've been a big proponent of sensory inclusiveness at these events, and you had the truck that drove so many miles to get here. Can you talk about how that went tonight and just what an impact it was for a lot of the families that, that go to these shows? So I know for a fact that there were a lot of families that came to this show specifically because of hearing about that, and that's a great thing. Um, you never want to hear that somebody didn't get to come to your show because they felt unwelcome or felt like they wouldn't fit in or any of those things. That's a, that's a terrible precedent to set. So um, I actually haven't connected with uh, Culture City yet other than them telling me congratulations on my match because I'm on the board with them and they're really nice. Um, but, but uh, you know, I'm sure we'll, we'll go back over numbers and stuff. Um, but I know that there were so many people just coming excited to see the truck. This is the first time we've had the truck here as opposed to a room set up or one of the actual sensory rooms on site. So um, it probably was a really fun experience for a lot of people just getting to see that we can do this mobily too. So I know a lot of folks were saying, well, are you always going to have Culture City there? We would love to have them as many places as we can. Right now they're in 320 buildings or venues worldwide, um, but some venues they're not. So it's wonderful to know that, hey, if it's something like this where we don't physically have the backstage space, and drive the truck up and still have the same capabilities. So that's fantastic. What are your uh, thoughts on uh, free agent Scarlett Bordeaux? Is she somebody you would like to see brought into AEW? Oh, man. I mean, are you, which, what's your deal with Scar Scarlett? Well, she's a free agent. She's one of the hottest female free agents on the planet right now. She doesn't have a home. I don't know. Are you a manager? Am I her manager? Yeah, you just I'm a, I'm walked right up to me, Scarlett. No, I'm giving you a hard time. Okay. But, um, <laughs> no, Scarlett, I, I like Scarlett. I think she's a great competitor. Um, I think it's very important with our division, because a lot of our girls are newer, a lot of people maybe don't have such re name recognition. I mean, even with me, I've been in the business for a long time, but not as a wrestler. So um, it's very important that everybody gets their moments and their time so that people can get to know some of these girls, because that's half of the, I mean, any sports, industry you want to know the athletes that's part of why you know people come and watch the Jacksonville Jaguars because they know the players they know their history they know about their families we want to be able to do that with the girls so I don't want to have ooh, maybe Sorry, he's getting mad. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> I, we don't want to have so many girls that we can't do that so if you don't see a face yet it's always just a yet that doesn't mean that the doors are closed to anyone um, it's just a matter of making sure we build this division correctly and that everybody gets a fair shake at presenting themselves. Randy, you mentioned moments, and tonight you made the walk for the first time as an in-ring performer. Your music dropped. Where does that moment rank um, in your wrestling history so far? I mean, it's pretty, I mean, it's very big. Uh, one of the things that I do when I compete, um, and a lot of this has to do with the, the video that you guys saw there's the, the emotion there is actually absolutely real uh, I use that emotion obviously to leverage my position this time but it is real emotion and um, I had a bad habit of making moments too great for myself so I kind of pull them back now um, I don't allow myself to get worked up until I hear the music. So that's really just the most exciting moment ever because I haven't allowed myself to panic. I haven't allowed myself to say, oh, I don't feel good. No, I'm, I'm just here and I'm doing my job and I'm ready. And then when you hear that music, something just swells inside of you and it's like, it's, we're, we're on, it's time. This is, this is it, let's do it. So 